What's going on everybody? I am reviewing all seven of Quentin Tarantino's films in preparation for his brand new film coming out on January 8th, The Hateful Eight. So about three years after the release of the Kill Bill films, Quentin Tarantino embarked on his next film entitled Death Proof. When Death Proof was released, it was actually released as a double feature with another director, Robert Rodriguez, with his film called Planet Terror. What the two directors were trying to do were to replicate the, the old Grindhouse film double features that used to be shown back in the 70s that were more so exploitation films. And basically, these were called Grindhouse Theaters, which, you know, prompts the title Grindhouse for both features. Of course, this is Quentin Tarantino that I'm reviewing, so I'm only going to be reviewing Death Proof and not Planet Terror. So Death Proof is an exploitation film. It's also an action film. It's also considered a horror film. It's a lot of different genres mixed into this movie because of the different styles that Quentin Tarantino is injecting into the film. What it primarily does is pays it pays homage to, to muscle car movies of the 70s. There were a lot of you know muscle car movies and TV shows that came out during the 70s and this film pays homage to those movies. Obviously as we can see Quentin Tarantino was very very influenced by many different genres of film and television as he grew up you know as a young kid and these are all the things that inspired him to be a director now and he's paying tribute to them in these films such as Death Proof. The movie stars Kurt Russell as stuntman Mike McKay. Now Mike McKay is an interesting person. He's a psychopath basically. He's a psychopath but he's a stunt driver and he uses his car to lurk on women and then he takes them on rides only to kill them. But he can't kill himself because he has a stunt car and he's on the protected side. So that leads to the title of Death Proof. The car is Death Proof because him as a stunt man, he technically can't really die in it. But yeah, he's a creep. He he lurks women and you know he basically he has a fetish for doing this type of thing. Like he's a psychopath, he's a killer, he's a murderer. The movie also stars Rosario Dawson, who does an incredible job in the movie. And then it has a real stunt driver named Zoe Bell. She's and she's an actual stunt driver, so that that lends some credibility to the movie as far as you know having people who have been through stunt driving, you know, for for high. Hollywood. And there's definitely more to this movie, but I definitely got to get to the nitty gritty of, it, of this movie. So Death Proof, it's enjoyable to, to a certain degree. So while Death Proof is certainly the better half of the Grindhouse double feature, it's definitely better than Planet Terror. It still kind of falls short to delivering a Quentin Tarantino masterpiece that we're used to seeing. I think one of the biggest things that hurts the film is that there's really, really, really long dialogue that is inconsequential, it leads to nothing, there's no real reason for the dialogue it's had. So the movie's kind of weird at how it's structured. It starts off with three friends who end up meeting stuntman Mike and it doesn't turn out too well for him. But then after that, about halfway through the movie, it switches to the story of three more friends who have a different altercation with stuntman Mike. So it's really, the only thing that's consistent here is stuntman Mike. You know, Kurt Russell's character, he's the only consistent piece of this movie because it's really two separate stories that's kind of fused into one. But again, it doesn't help that there's really, really long dialogue sequences that just don't do anything for the story. Honestly, the most enjoyable parts are Kurt Russell. He's extraordinary in this movie. Like, I absolutely believe that he was just a psychopathic killer and he was a murderer and he was a creep. He's, he was a stalker. I absolutely believed it and he was just incredible in this in this role and, you know, for Kurt Russell to play this character as well, it just makes sense. I mean, Kurt Russell, you know, he's had a long history in Hollywood and he was just an extraordinary veteran actor to be in, in this place of this role. But beyond that, like, it's just a really weird off kind of movie. I get what he was trying to do, but I just think it was really offset it by too much dialogue. Quentin Tarantino has very, very strong writing capabilities, but this was just a, you know, overabundance of it. And I would be fine with it if the dialogue actually meant something to the story, but most of the time it didn't. It was just like random stories that had nothing to do with the plot line. So, you know, as I'm saying that, it really is probably the weakest film he's made. Yeah, absolutely, it, it, it is. It's the weakest film he's made thus far. I mean, Jackie Brown isn't my favorite movie ever, but it's certainly a way stronger film than this is. Like, Jackie Brown had cohesive plot and had good dialogue and great characters. This really fell short in a lot of those elements. I mean, anytime I pop in Death Proof, I'm really only watching it to watch Kurt Russell. And the ending action sequence, the ending chase sequence, it's phenomenal. Like, it's real, it's, it's gritty, visceral, just practical effects, no CGI, real simple chase scene that's just extraordinary to watch. But yeah, like I said, Death Proof is definitely his weakest film thus far. Uh, it's not a terrible film, it's just kind of hard to watch sometimes because there really are no implications for all of the dialogue that's had throughout the film. With all of that said, I'm going to have to go ahead and give Death Proof a 7.3 out of 10. Like I said, Quentin Tarantino's weakest effort is in this film and I think he was a bit distracted, him and Robert Rodriguez, with this double feature grindhouse uh, showcase that they, that they were trying to have. 
it's a cool idea, but just for this day and age, or even, you know, it came out almost 10 years ago, even in that time, it just wasn't something that was commonplace, and it, it probably just doesn't have a place in Hollywood anymore. I think it's a reason that those type of things were phased out. People's attention spans are very, very short nowadays, so to ask them to spend nearly four hours in a movie, it's just unrealistic now. So, as I'm looking at this film on its own, it's okay, but it's definitely his weakest effort and his least focused effort thus far. Alright folks, that's all I got from my review of Death Proof. As always, follow me on social media, JRWTheCreator on Twitter and Instagram, and then go check out my website, JordanRWilliams.com, and check out all of my other movie reviews from Quentin Tarantino's filmography. And as always folks, I'll see you next time.